All right, guys, welcome back to the glorious battlefield. We are returning to NTW3. This is one of the, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna say it, all right? I'm gonna say it for everyone, and I'm gonna say it loud enough for everyone in the back to hear. NTW3 is the greatest historical mod for Total War, if not the greatest historical mod for any video game. This is NTW3. I really don't do enough of this game, and I uh, I plan to change that. We're going to see a lot more NTW3 battles coming out here. So if you got any epic battles, I know you guys do. It's a huge community. Send them to my Discord, which my Discord is linked down in the video description. That's how I got this battle replay. So I was streaming, and I've been streaming every day. I think I'm going to stream Monday uh, through Friday. Uh, just playing Bannerlord or whatever I really want to play But I was playing some classical music in the background and it was actually really epic during the battles and you know what a lot of great Classical pieces were written during this time the age of revolution So, you know, what? let's uh, let's uh cue music. All right, here we go We're gonna add classical music to the battlefield. I should be able I mean this is copyright free i mean right these songs are old i really shouldn't get a copyright strike but we'll see um if you guys like the classical music let me know down in the comments below if you don't let me know as well that way you know if a bunch of people are like bro turn this off this is ruining the battle you know i doubt that's gonna happen but you know if that's one of the if you're one of those people then uh you know i'll I'll, uh, I'll consider not using it in the future anyway so let's jump in here this is a big league battle this is a 4v4 and i assume they are playing loc line of communication which essentially it's not about completely destroying your enemy it's about controlling the battlefield and whoever leaves or ends the battle with the most points is victorious so you can see the different capture zones are points uh, so you got one point here, you've got one point here, you have a four-pointer, if we can uh, not get under the world, a four-pointer over here, and then closer to the opposing side, which is going to be the French side, they have a point in this town, and then they have a four-pointer back here, which is uh, where they spawn. So those are the points of contention. Uh, cont contention content anyways, you get what I'm saying uh, So we're definitely gonna see a lot of action in the center because it's quite obvious that both teams are gonna control their four pointers So it's all gonna come down to probably these two right here on the mini map. Let me make it bigger these two right here I think those are gonna be the big ones, but actually there's a considerable size force here that might be pushing for this number four spot We'll see how this plays out. So oops. I didn't mean to hide that. Let's make it a little smaller so let's look at the factions really quick. So like I said, we have uh, mostly just French armies on the other side. They're different uh, different forces. Um, unfortunately, you can't see what they are until they're a little closer. Um, it's That's a mechanic in the game. It's, it forces you to scout and whatnot. Uh, but let's look at the side that we can see. And of course, they're all represented in the blue here. Uh, so we have Spain. So Spain is on the far right, and we already have shots fired. So, uh, Spain is going to be attacking this side. Uh, next to them, we have Russia. So, Russia moving up. Uh, this is 1807 Russia. So, they've got some awesome infantry. I love Russia. Love their uniforms, too. I love the green. It's just it's just different, you know? And then over here, we have a peninsular. I, I believe this is like a Brit British peninsular force. It's a combination of British, uh, you know, United Kingdom, Spain, and Portugal. Uh, in their ranks, which is really cool. And then finally, the final force, way on the left flank, we have Austria, which uh, Austria is going to be, I assume, in well, they're going to be defending this point here. They've got a lot of troops in the back here. I'm curious what he's doing. They're very far away. I don't know if it was just a deployment thing and they got a long way to go. I think that is the case. Um, so let's see what happens here. This is where things are getting spicy. The Spanish are in a bit of an organized, an unorganized mess right now, but that's okay. They have time to regroup. Um, there were some shots fired here with the infantry. We got some guard here. Very, very 
fancy uniforms, I do say so myself. Look at these guys. Absolute studs. They look glorious and epic, and I would be afraid to fight them. I think, I, I don't know if these guys are good or not. See, I, they could be like an elite guard, but they also could be like national guard, you know? <laughs> Anyways, the French are kind of probing the Spanish uh, uh, positioning. This looks like, is this Empress Dragoons? Looks like it's Empress Dragoons. Um, but he's not really pushing too far. He's just kind of holding the ground across the uh, river, using the little uh, land ford here, little land bridge. Um, but it looks like the Spanish are changing course. And just look at the scale. Again, greatest mod, greatest historical mod for any video game. Look at the scale of this. Look at just the positioning, the um, immersion, the epicness of it all. It's just fantastic. So... Uh, Oh, I'm mistaken. I am mistaken, guys. Earlier, I said it was four French armies. No, we do have a French ally here. We have the Polish. The Polish. And it looks like it might be a Polish mixed with the Grand Feder the, or the Confederate uh, Confederation of the Rhine, I believe is what it's called. Which is a... Um... Oh, that's spicy. Uh, that's uh, Confederation of the Rhine is a uh, essentially a nation built by Napoleon. Like a German... German nation built by Napoleon didn't last long didn't last long but uh, cool nonetheless uh, so over here we have um, the British almost like creeping forward you know they got the tall grass here we got some bushes this is this is dead center of the battlefield here so imagine being one of these men you know one of these men right in the center uh, they should be in range to open fire on that French cap. I don't think they're going to do much damage because it is pretty far. But we'll see what happens. They might be just holding fire. We do have some Austrian cap here as well. Kind of support the British infantry. And this is a really cool map too. It all kind of plays at a river. You know, you got a ri not only is there a river, but there's some high ground here. It looks like it's very favorable for the French army. So... Uh, we'll see how the um, the British side, the Allied side, as I will call them, uh, kind of deals with it. Uh, we got a farmhouse captured. No surprise there. Uh, but the French are getting very aggressive here. I kind of like seeing this, too, because this is one of the areas, in terms of terrain, I would say that the Allies kind of have not an advantage, but it's fairly equal. If you look at the, the heights of this ground, you know, like, compared to, like, over here, where I think the French have an advantage here. Uh, but the French need to hurry up and get some infantry to the edge of this uh, this cliff here. But he's actually kind of fallen back here. So I'm not sure what he's doing. But yeah, the French on this side, this French army, is pushing up and is about to engage the Spanish. And the Spanish are kind of having to uh, reorganize their line here a little bit. Uh, it looks like they're going to make their stand right here. I don't know why they gave up this area. There, there must have been something they saw or some sort of strategy that they're going for um, to where he, you know, he plans. Obviously, he fell back. So we'll see what the Spanish kind of do here. But I think they are going to make their stand here, and we are going to see some gunfire uh, pretty soon. I'm uh, just kind of getting a bird's eye view of the battlefield. Lots of cannon fire going at it. The Polish artillery opening fire. Um, it looks like they're... Are they going for the British artillery? Ooh, no, the British artillery is going for the infantry. Got some Polish line infantry. And we also have some cav kind of playing a little cat and mouse. We got Austrian cav way far on this flank. I think he's looking for an opportunity to either go for some archers... Or not archers. What? Archers? Who's bringing archers? Like, what? Not archers. I meant cannon. I, 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 you know, artillery. I just, I don't know. I guess I... <laughs> usually when I think... Of, I, you know, it's been too long. It's been so long since I played this uh, this mod that I'm so used to just seeing vulnerable archers against Cav. Um, we got the Triadora, Triadoras. Uh, this is a skirmishing unit. Let's see if... I, I think... Yeah, there we go. Shots fired. Finally, finally, right? Kind of a slow start to this battle, guys. I mean, look at how much time has been has been uh, has been used up. Almost a quarter of the battle, and this is the first infantry engagement, uh, which is kind of surreal.
such a beautiful mod. So he's kind of using this nice little terrain here, which gives him the height advantage here so he can fire over, or the height kind of vantage point where he can fire over his own men. Uh, they're not quite in range of the line infantry though, or either that or he's, he's holding fire. A lot of French Cav shifting over to, this would be the French left flank, the Spanish right flank. Um, he is kind of pursuing the Spanish Cav, but Spanish Cav are not wanting to engage just yet. And that's so important in this game, guys. You don't want to force an engagement with your Cav unless you absolutely have to. Having Cav at the late game it can be absolutely vital. It can be so vital. Uh, but now he is falling back the skirmishers as they are under heavy fire. I don't know if he was just trying to delay the French forces. Now we have French artillery shelling the Spanish infantry position. So I would love to know, guys, how many are watching who are from Spain or lives in Spain or is Spanish... Uh, let me know down in the comments. Are you proud? Are you, are you proud of your nation here? It's it's uh, being tested by those pesky French. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. That's why I love this game. It's like, I always love seeing people um, proud of their nation, you know? Like, or not necessarily, not maybe not proud, but like, they, you know, they represent their nation. You know what I mean? They like to see their nation in action. You know, it's always fun to see, like, players pick a nation based on the, where they live. But anyways, here comes a cab charge. Going for the artillery, but this seems disastrous. I just don't think they have the morale. Oh, yeah, they switched the canister shot. They have fallen back. Spanish cab was closing in as well. Did not take that artillery. Very bold move there. Let's go ahead and look around other sides of the battlefield where things are getting interesting. Uh, the Span or the French, excuse me, uh, the neighbor of Spain, France, has uh, pushed forward and has taken this high ground. Uh, we do have some Russian lights or Russian skirmishers kind of popping shots at them. That's a good use of these skirmishers. Really cool too, the grass is tall. They kind of have the greenish brown uniforms kind of hiding, you know? That's pretty cool, I don't know, I like the immersion there. Uh, over on this side, let's see, this would be the right flank of the allied side. We've got, um, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, well, no, this would, I'm sorry. This is the right flank of the French, French side. Uh, I was thinking I was looking at the Polish, but the Polish are back over here. I guess they're kind of hidden right now, but yeah, we got a sizable French force pushing up and this is, this is where things are going to get pretty spicy here on this side. So if we kind of look at the battlefield, it's kind of a fight in two fronts. We've got the French closing in here. They're doing a pretty good job with the positioning against the Spanish. The Russians are here as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the Russians do here because we got a situation where here's the other part of the battle, right? This is where it kind of splits off a little bit. Oh my goodness, a general is down. Oh no. Was that, is, I think that's the, uh, the Polish general. He is out of the fight, guys. So that is a huge loss for Poland and a rough start for the French and uh in poland so yeah it'll be interesting to see how this plays out um the french are pushing up against the uh british here but the austrians are closing in with reinforcements as we speak and we'll see what the um the polish can do without their general now but no i don't see any pushing from the polish i don't even see the polish army like where are they they ran away <laughs> they're like ah our general's dead i'm out of here Back over here, things are getting really intense. Uh, I think I saw a unit, I think I saw a unit break while I was talking about the fight over there. Uh, but yeah, we've got artillery set up just perfectly. The French, uh, I, are, you know, the French I think are doing a really great job here. Oh yeah. Oh geez, geez, look at this. Oh my goodness, they're getting chewed up. The Spanish artillery needs to answer back. And they certainly are under intense pressure. I mean, imagine being an artillery crew in this situation. You're getting shot at. You got cannonballs coming for you. You're having to panically reload this cannon and it's so loud, you know? It's so loud and 
It had to have been super intense. Is this the officer here? He's like kind of directing orders. He's like, sir, please get out of the way. I'm fine. I'm fine. Dude, this guy, this guy lives on the edge, bro. Back turn on the enemy. Standing almost right in front of an allied cannon. He's just like, ah, oh, I direct my men from the front. <laughs> Same thing over here. The Spanish are insane, man. What the? This guy, okay. This guy's not as close to direct front. But I mean, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? This guy's definitely a little crazier. Look at him. Bro. Bro. You're nuts. Let's see if the French are doing the same thing. Now the French are, uh, French are a little smarter, either smarter or less brave. You know, it's up to you to decide. Uh, but yeah, the French are a little safer. They've got a little, uh, I guess they have guidelines or safety tips about how to work the cannons, you know? <laughs> Unlike the Spanish who are just going in it, you know, going at it, going, going in it. You know what I mean? All right, so let's go back over here where the French have decided to push here. And it makes sense. And I know why the French infantry is pushing here. Because if we zoom out, you can see the French are pushing very aggressively here. And if they push too aggressively, the Russians could easily fold and get behind the French. So this French army realizes that. And he's going to go ahead and send down, what is this, eight units? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ah, seven units uh, to kind of keep the, the Russians at bay. The Polish have now finally appeared. They turned off their invisible cloaks. And now they're fighting with honor as they push forward in their epic lines here to take on the British uh, Peninsular forces. Let's see if they're going to open fire here. Are they in range? Poland. Poland's pretty awesome too. Got any pulls? Pulls in the uh, in the audience there. In the, I was gonna say in the chat, you know, but this isn't a live stream. Uh, back here we've got the British. Again, this is the Peninsular British. Hit, wow, intense, intense firefight on this front. Woo! Loud to the max, baby, to the max. Oh, here we go. Big cap charge by the French. Looks like Empress Dragoons going in for something here. I'm not sure what they're kind of charging in for. I think they just see a chaos of lines here that they're going to try to charge and disrupt. Uh, but it's getting loud here. It's getting loud. All right. Oh, is he, is he going to hold? Is he going to hold? Uh, I don't know what they're trying. Were they? Uh, here comes a here come well here comes more cav support. No, just kidding. These are these are going for the infantry down the hill. But these guys can form square. But they don't do it. They don't do it. A bold French cav charge there. And I don't know. I don't know why though. I'm trying to understand. I mean, he did break the Austrian cab there. I, I'm just trying to figure out, was he trying to disrupt the Austrian so he could push up infantry and be a bit more organized? I'm not really sure. It was an interesting play and I don't think it was a bad play by any means, but uh, he definitely got the Austrians a little mixed up there, but I think the Austrians are okay. You know, they're, they're doing okay. Let's go back over here to the Spanish side bit of a um, it's kind of turning into a Mexican standoff here you know where um, two sides are just kind of holding their ground they're just continuing to fire at each other nobody's really making any bold moves here and nobody's really uh, pushing up a ton of troops they're just kind of probing each other so to speak uh, and um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a weird way to, to say that uh, but they're using the artillery to you know just soften each other up and the Spanish are starting to budge here a little bit but the Russians do have some cav over here, so I wonder if they're can they cross? I think they can cross over here. So maybe the Russians were thinking about getting behind the French, but maybe he's calling it off. I don't I'm not really sure. Uh the French over in the dead center of the battle here is uh the, well they're pushing really aggressively. 
to where the Russians are kind of in a defensive line stance here, just kind of holding their ground against the uh, the French. And then back over here. Oh my God, what a fight this is. Look at this, guys. Let's just take a moment and appreciate this. There we go, another charge of, I'm not sure what this unit is. Unfortunately, we don't know. I gotta get familiar with the units here. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they fall back, they're, they're gonna fall back, unfortunately. The British have an opportunity here to charge these lights. Are they gonna go for it, or are they gonna just sit there? Well, looks like they're gonna sit there. Oh, uh, there they go. So a nice charge into those lights. I don't think they're going to be able to break them. They got line infantry supporting them. Back over this way, we've got a unit of infantry peeling away from this main fight. Wow, there's a lot going on here. It looks like a lot of breaking. The oh, yeah, the Polish are charging. The Polish are charging with a ton of cav on the far flank. And it's causing... It's causing a mass retreat right now. Look at this Polish, a long Polish line. Oh my God. I think the, I think the Polish and the French, they've got them right where they want them. Look at now they're just charging it. Bayonet charging. Infantry. Oh, this is a mess right here. This is a mess. The French are dominating on this side but this battle is far from over guys and um you know i'm not impressed here with the french side on this front it looks like the russians and the spanish are holding their own i would say this french army is doing decent you know i, I honestly i think they they have a slight edge i think they've kind of been beating the spanish just fantastic use of the artillery to really soften up that infantry but it's not a huge victory right like it's not a huge success here for the for the french they haven't like pushed the spanish off their hill they pushed them back a little bit the russians here have really won their engagement and are pushing the um the french back to the hill which is smart i don't think the french need to push here especially since they're winning on this side oh yeah the lights are going at it the light infantry gotta be careful over here a little too close they're gonna get overwhelmed by the line infantry oh how beautiful of a shot that was i mean just seeing the gun flap such a beautiful game you know napoleon total war alone you know i'm gonna say guys i'm gonna say it i th i still think to this day napoleon is the most beautiful total war you know and you could zoom in you could see yeah sure it, it's the graphics aren't as sharp as the newer games but there's this weird like in terms of the atmosphere it's not weird it's beautiful it's like a painting it's like we're watching a painting unravel you know uh it's just such a well-made game and uh it's a great great uh game for mods like this one okay let's go back over here where things are getting a little interesting on this side so the spanish are holding their lines here um they look a little weak here, but look at this. They're going to go for a charge. They're going to go for that artillery, but the French are going to counter and send in their cab as well. They defeat the Spanish, and now the French will fall back using this cab completely defensively. Very good play. Very good play by the French. Fantastic. 
Now let's uh, take a little mental note here. Look at this. The Russians are sending over some cav as well. Got to be careful. Is this the general? I think it is. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but ooh, here comes the cav. Do the... F oh, okay. Oh, getting crazy. It's getting crazy, guys. The Russians are going in. Unfortunately, the French cab was not paying attention. In the center, they went for another cab charge to go for the artillery. Great teamwork between the Spanish and the Russians. I don't think the Spanish were able to accomplish their goal of destroying the artillery, but it was a good effort, and the Russians, well, I was gonna say, did the Russians win here? It's pretty close. They, they, need, they need help. They might want to send this cab unit over to this side. Fatigue is something that's so important in this game. Like, you got to watch fatigue. And um, especially with cav. If you just run your cav around nilly-willy and, and then decide to charge them in, they're going to be tired. Like, cav is one of those units where you've got to perfectly time them. You know, like, perfectly maneuver them make sure they're not tired and uh, when they charge in they're fresh you know or it, at the very least not exhausted but yeah it looks like uh, the allies here have kind of they're doing their best they're kind of kiting they're kind of falling back and slowing down the French forces over on this side it does look promising because the Russians are very healthy they've got all their infantry over here I don't think the French are gonna be able to budge here that much even the British are kind of sending over two units check this out kind of helping the Austrians hold against this big French line the Austrians are gonna fall back which is a smart play but the French and, and Polish definitely have the advantage here, and they need to keep squeezing, squeeze the British and the Austrians. If they can quickly break them, uh, they could easily turn these forces onto the Russians and kind of close in and make a sandwich of the Spanish. A Spanish sandwich. What do you? What do you? I, I've never heard of. Maybe it. Maybe it exists. Maybe there is a Spanish sandwich. That, oh, here comes the Russians. Hold on. Hold that stupid thought. The Russians are going in for a rear charge. And it is a great charge. Oh, my God. They got the general. They got the general. The French general is down. And so that makes it the second general that has fallen in an instant morale break. Oh, my goodness. The French are cracking over here the russian cab is too much man russia big big shout out to russia here they're doing a great job now they're going for the artillery let's see if they can close in it looks like they can it looks like they're gonna get it That sound effect is them destroying the cannons. And um, I think the Russian player might be the person who sent this in. Um, that was an impressive job by both Spain and Russia. Spain just held the line, you know, and Russia used his cab. Meanwhile, guys, keep in mind, Russia is also fighting over here as well. He's fighting a two-front battle, essentially, and he's doing a great job. Uh, he just kind of saved the day there. And they desperately needed that victory because over on this side of the fight, the French are dominating. So, this is this is huge. This is huge. We got a charge by the Austrians. to the French lines. Uh, the British went in for a charge, but it looks like the Polish are holding them back.
And now there's a huge cab charge by Poland going for the infantry. I think they're going for the nail in the coffin. I think they're going for the throat. And the Austrians are going to try to counter charge. Keep, these, keep the Polish cab at bay, but I don't think they have enough. Oh, yeah, Poland's going for the throat. You know why? I think they realize. Oh, yeah, big break, big break. Oh, this is this is interesting. This is interesting. Another cab charge by the Russians. Not really seeing much success there, but I think they were just trying to disrupt the French lines while the Russian lines take them on. Uh, so what I was saying is why this is interesting. Well, on one side, you have defeat for the French and utter victory for the Allies. On this side, you have utter, utter, vic uh, utter victory. <laughs> for the French and just complete defeat for the allies. And uh, well, it's really just a battle of two sides and who's gonna take it here. But the Russians are going in for once again for another charge. They form square. Ooh, really good square. And they're gonna fall back. And the Russians are now going to fall back. And I think that's a smart play because I think the Russians, they need to fall back to their artillery and they need to regroup their numbers. Uh-oh. Can we not hear the gunfire? Uh-oh. Sound glitch. There we go. It happens. It'll fix itself. But yeah, I think the Russians kind of need to hold and just kind of play the waiting game until their Spanish ally uh, can get back over to him. But right now, Spain is just in full, full, um, like just tracking down. They're just running down the French and making sure that they don't recover and join back into the battle. But the French are playing it smart here too. They, they know they've been defeated, but you know, why just throw your units away? Why not just uh, try to regroup with the rest of the rest of the forces or at the very least keep Spain busy, keep Spain busy while you guys team up on Russia over here in Austria. And look at this, look at this death formation. Look at this last stand the British and the Austrians are making. It's just chaos. It's shell shock, that's why we can't hear the guns. It's just like, you know, it's like shell shock, you know? Classic Hollywood shell shock. Um, but the sound will return. But yeah, the French are going in for the kill here. The Russians are full on retreating, which is a smart play. They're going to use the river. They're going to use their artillery to hold their ground. And, you know, it might be time for Spain to stop pursuing. Maybe just kill these couple units of French here. Oh no, Allied General down. Greta Burger. Greta Burger wiped out by the Polish. General gone. There you go. Polish and French victory on this side. The forces are going to regroup. We'll go ahead and fast forward here a little bit. These battles are quite long. Um, but there's a little bit of a down, down, you know, time in the battle. All right, guys. So uh, crazy, crazy movements here. Uh, it looks like the French, this is pretty crazy here. The French are, they sent an army over to try to uh, group up, rendezvous, right? Right, because they're French. Rendezvous up with the uh, defeated French that were fighting the Spanish, but the Spanish and the Russians are doing a good job of trying to prevent that from happening. Uh, th that, that's huge, that's huge. And look at the Russians got aggressive here to hold back the French so they couldn't group up with their, um, their reinforcements from the other side. The sound, man. The sound. I gotta fix that. I can't fix it now, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, the Polish are 
making a huge push with a ton of troops into this tree line. I think they want to take control of this building. That's the plan. We'll see. I, I definitely, it feels like this is in favor of the French at this point, but we'll see. This is pretty big for the Russians right here. I think they're doing a great job. Let's see if they can start chewing away at the French numbers. Yeah, he's falling back. That's clearly an outnumbered fight there. Now let's see what the French are doing. The French are running for this town. They're falling back to the town. And maybe that's where the Spanish are headed. Because they want to take control of the town. Because remember, guys, if they take this building, uh, it's theirs. You know? So maybe the French are like, you know what? This is where we need to make our stand. Actually, it looks like they're turning here. It looks like they're turning around they might set up a line here of defense yeah it looks like they're gonna make their stand i think they just want to defend this village i was expecting them to kind of fall back more and kind of use the streets of this town to kind of hold back the spanish but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen oh wait maybe they're just kind of regrouping here oh let's see where it's oh yeah the polish have taken this building so that's one point there so all the French have to do is just kind of hold their ground. You know, they just have to hold their ground. This is really concerning. And Spanish are very healthy, relatively speaking. So the Spanish could easily take this town over here. And if they take this town, they could easily take uh, this four-pointer, which nothing is in here. The French might want to send a unit in here, even if it's a depleted unit. Just get over there and, um, and defend it and get those four points. But the battle is more than halfway over. It's almost three quarters over. And we just got a lot of formation here. A lot of forming up. The Russians are really... They're going full speed ahead. They are just forming up here and really trying to... Uh, well, they've, they've united with the Spanish infantry. So they're definitely going to try to group up here and defeat the French. But they, they got to be careful, though, because the, um, the Polish are on the far flank so this is the biggest challenge for the russians but here's the good news there's a little bit of a natural barrier a little bit of a river not really i mean i guess they can walk through this but they could make their stand here with a couple of units and try to hold back the polish as long as possible but they got to do something here on this side they got to do something So this looks promising for the Spanish. Uh, I think the French definitely need to send up reinforcements over here. Now keep in mind guys, these units have already broken before. Their general is dead. Their army is is essentially dead. This is what's left of that French army. So uh, they gotta be careful and I think they know that. I think they realize that and that's kind of why they're playing this, you know, kiting game where they're just fighting a little bit, falling back. Just trying to de delay as long as possible. And I think the French realize how that's a problem. And they are sending over a column of line infantry to try to support that town. The Russians are just kind of moving directly forward. I think they want to try to stop this column. Shoot at them in their sides maybe. Maybe stop the French and make them stand their ground instead of going over there and supporting the village. But this is going to be huge over here, too. The Polish have pushed forward. The Polish need to get hyper-aggressive. Hyper-aggressive. They need to try to uh, whittle down as many troops as possible. And the Russians realize that. That's why they're just constantly falling back. And this is such a... This is such a good tactic in this game. Is the constant falling back. Don't give the enemy what they want. They want a fight here. You know, they want a fight... Don't give it to them. Fall back and fall back and fall back. Now, eventually, you gotta you gotta make your stand. You know, they, you can't just keep falling back. Eventually, you gotta make your stand. But delay, delay as long as possible. And who knows? Maybe you can turn the table. Quick cab charge when he's not expecting it. Something of that nature. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but this is where the fight is now. This is all where it's gonna come down. It's all gonna come down here. And now we've got square formation. Because the Russians charged in with cap. The French are counter-charging.
Looks like they were going to go for the Russian Cav, but they might go for a vulnerable unit. Are they going to go for Levin von Binsing? Let's see. I think he is. Oh, but he's getting shot pretty hard by the infantry. Oh, nice. Nice job by the Russians kind of seeing that. Now the French are attacking the Russian cap. They're like, you know what? We can't just leave here empty-handed. Let's just go for the cap. Guys, forget it. Let's get out of here. We failed. It looks like they're pretty tired. They're moving pretty slow. They're moving very slow. Um, on this side, it looks pretty promising. It looks... I keep saying pretty. It looks promising for the Spanish as their line infantry engage here. Uh, the French line infantry, they're finally... Guys, they did it. They're going to finally connect with the other French forces and extend this line infantry and continue to hold off the Spanish. The French cannot fall back anymore. And if I'm Prussia, or I'm sorry, not Prussia, if I'm Poland here, I would stop pursuing the Russians. I would start peeling units over here and getting behind the Russian line infantry that's engaging the main army. That's what I would be doing just because they, they want they want to be chased. You know, they want to be chased. It looks like there's a little bit of a cab fight here. Looks like the Russians are charging into some French units that uh, are up to no good, causing trouble in the neighborhood. But yeah, I would stop this. Like, I mean, I get it. Oh, oh no, another friendly general has fallen. Cookie, your general. That's all right. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I would send at least two units. You don't have to send this entire force. Just send like these two guys, these two units over here to help, because this is a big problem. Now we do have a cab charge from Poland, so he is helping in that regard. Well, cab support. The Russians aren't going to have it. They're like, no, no, no. You get out of here, Poland. Had enough of your crap. Man, Russia's just a bunch of bullies. Now, we got Poland setting up their artillery. This is pretty huge. French artillery here, Polish artillery over here. Let's see if that helps them out. But, oh, wait, is this a cap charge? In the center, going for the infantry. Look at this. Dragoons of Kiev. My goodness, we might get a big break here. So epic. The French flag, the Russian flags, the uniforms, the smoke. <laughs> a fantastic fight. A bloody fantastic fight. Uh, the Russians have pushed back the Polish Cav. This Russian Cav might be the MVP of this battle. They have won many fights. And now this artillery, uh, they're trying to limber it up. It's not going to happen. I'm surprised he's not going for it. They're just kind of chatting like, yo, what up? Hey, how's it going? You know, not too bad. The weather's been nice lately, so that's good. Summer, you know. And we have Poland still pursuing the Russian infantry. Russia is now going to fall back their troops. They're rushing them across the river here. That might actually be huge because they can use this high ground and hold against this huge uh, Polish force. And do I keep calling them Prussia? I might do that. I do that all the time. Russia, Prussia, Poland. They, you know, P... Whenever a faction starts with the same letter, I always I do that. Prussia, Poland... Um, I'll do, sometimes I'll mix up uh, Prussia and Russia because they sound similar. Anyways, nice cab charge by the Russians. I think this is where their charging ends, though. I don't really see them breaking through this French line. But they did move up. Look at these guys going into melee. Oh, yeah. They might break them here. And the French realize, they're like, they're trying to create some distance. Beautiful, beautiful. 
The Spanish are pushing. They're pushing. Oh my god, I think Spain... Spain and uh, Russia might just pull this off. It all depends on what's going to happen here with, with Poland. The Polish. It just depends what, what they're going to do. Another big charge here. Oh, this, uh, this unit of cav and infantry, but the Russian infantry are breaking, but they've done their job. They've broken the French lines. French are uh, are in trouble here. Uh, they're kind of yeah, they're in trouble. They are in trouble. The French kind of reforming their lines, trying to get a better formation, and uh, it's all gonna come down. I, I'm gonna say it's gonna come down to Poland. It's gonna come down to Poland. Oh my God, this looks like disaster. Poland. This is. Do they have artillery? Oh, oh my goodness. This is perfect. Oh, they missed. And a big sigh of relief could be heard five miles away as the cannonballs continue to miss this line. And they go in for a charge. What chats? What chats? Walking through that cannon fire. Oh, they, they made contact there and it might cause them to break. This is bad. This is not good for Poland. Yeah, Poland, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Uh, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I think Poland should have stopped pursuing the Russians, at least that Russian force, and should have sent units up this way. But I think that that opportunity is gone as the French are on their back legs here. I don't even know what that means, back legs. They're, they're being pushed back, and they're taking more of a defensive stance here. And Poland is getting charged by Cav. Oh my goodness. The Russian Cav. Bro. Bro. Poland. No. Russia, dude. Killing it right now. Killing it. So with, um, with Poland pretty much out of this game, got one unit there some of these units might return from breaking with them out of the game i think russia now they've got extra troops free to march over to take on the french and the french are probably thinking oh what's going on what's you know they're trying to look they're like you know the general's using his his uh his glasses there to kind of scope in what's happening with Poland and then he sees the disaster and his men look to him and he's like is everything going okay with Poland he's like absolutely guys absolutely just keep fighting <laughs> Poland's doing so good over there guys We're, they're gonna show up in reinforcements in no time okay if you say so you know poor general just knows deep down inside you know oh, well, it's over you know <laughs> It's over. Well, you never know. The, you know. I mean, they're outnumbered. The French are outnumbered. But we could see them pull off a crazy victory. It's. I mean, Spain's looking a little battered here. A little tired. A little weak. Depleted. We'll see how they hold. But, uh, yeah, we are running out of time in this battle. It's 25%. Uh, there's three, three quarters over now. 
So it's gonna come down to the uh, last remaining fights here. And even Spain, they're like, ah, we can't, we can't push anymore. We're gonna have to fall back. Yeah, it's a smart play. The French do control this building here. But yeah, if they want to win this battle, I mean, let's see. In terms of control, so Russia has Russia and Company as this building. Um, nobody's taken this building. So they have four points. So if we're counting at the current points, four against one. France needs to send a unit back and capture this four-pointer in the back here. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to do it. I think, I guess in there, well, they might send them back. I don't know. These, these look like a guard unit. But there is an intense melee going on right now, and it looks like it's in favor of Spain. Yeah, Spain takes it. So the last building that France had control of is gone as Spain takes control of it. But this could end... I mean, I don't know. It's still really close. Look at look at Poland just going for, like, moral victory here. Trying to... Sh they're like, I'm shooting this Russian cab. Bunch of jerks. You know, this Russian cab just, like... If, if Russia wins this battle, it's because of their cab. They have been monstrous on the battlefield. Just a real terror uh, for the French and Polish. But just kind of zooming out here and looking at the bigger picture, it does seem like, in terms of numbers, the French are doing okay. Um, we just got to hope that they can hold the line. I mean, Spain is kind of, like I said, looks kind of battered. They look tired. They look depleted. I don't know if they can keep fighting here. But the, the, to be fair, the French lines are pretty thin as well. I think the general is trying to keep their morale high. I don't know if he's using general abilities or what. Uh, so this is what's left of Poland. I think Poland's going for uh, a building, it appears. I think that's all they can do at this point. Spain still controls this building. Using it to fire down on the flank of the French. All right, finally, we're getting, uh, we're witnessing the Russians get a little aggressive here. They've sent up three units here of musketeers. They got the, the deadly cab moving around as well. Um, but again, the French numbers look pretty solid. He needs to send up these three as well, these three units. Because, I don't know, the French lines just seem to be doing very well. The Spanish are crumbling, or at least one unit is. No, actually, the French are kind of falling back from the Spanish. Okay, Spain's Spain's still dangerous. Spain is still dangerous. And the French are now falling back over here. And it just seems like they're delaying the inevitable. Uh, the Polish have gone for the building. To get some points. Uh, we do have this Polish artillery, which is pretty big. I think they're shooting at the cab here. Uh, this cab is probably really tired. Yeah, they're winded and shaken, but not stirred. They're still in the fight. Let's see what he goes for. I think he's going for the artillery. Let's see if he can make it. Ooh, they're yellow morale. Let's see. Can they get a shot off here? If they can land a hit. Oh, and they're getting shot at, too. Why did they hold fire? They were about to... F oh, no! Too late. Wow, if they just had a couple more seconds. Wow, this Russian cab, dude. Oh, my God. 
unstoppable. I can't believe they just pulled that off. Oh, man. The French are now making an L. L for loser. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's a smart play. And look at this big, big morale pop right here for the uh, Spanish. I don't know. The French... I mean, the French might need to get aggressive here, but this is, look at this. Russia's going for the kill. They're going for the throat. <laughs> A nice charge. Now we got infantry charging in as well. Oh, yeah, I think they're going for the kill right here. Let's see how the French deal with this. They're trying to reorganize their line to deal with this massive charge from the Russians. This is what the Russians do best, bayonet charging. The Spanish have now kind of regrouped and have continued to put pressure onto the French. They kind of just have to hold here. The, the Fr it's vital that the French stand their ground here uh, and keep the... I'm sorry, the Spanish, not the French. The Spanish hold their ground here and keep the French busy while the Russians just eat away at the back lines. Oh, this is... Oh, that's game. Look at this. They've got them right where they want them. Surrounded. Utterly surrounded. The Cav is in the mix. Not even close to breaking. Multiple, multiple units are breaking for the French. There you have it, guys. That is going to conclude this battle. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here a little bit as we watch this unravel. I could be wrong. Maybe the French can pull something out, but I really don't see it happening. And I think this is going to be a victory through pure d domination, not necessarily by the points, but just by purely wiping the enemy off of the battlefield, which is something you don't see too often in NTW3. And we even have the French kind of mass retreating here but the cav is not going to let that happen look at that cav charge in and that just ins look at the mount of breaking here come on it's over you're not going to win this french so what a fight what a fight it came down to two sides of the battlefield yeah that's okay and yeah it's it was an utter utter just bloody fight that came down to the wire uh, very close battle, but I think Russia and Spain kind of saved the day for their allies. And uh, they are going to uh, crush these units. And um, there's a couple buildings that are still in control here. By, um, we got Poland here. Over on this side, we have the French, I suppose. Yeah, the French hold this building. Which I think they're going to get it back very quickly. So if they can just take this building, and they also need to take this building over here. So, I, I mean, let's be fair. Regardless of these points, it's it's over. This was a clear victory. Clear victory. There we go, they took it back. So technically it's tied right now. You got four points for the allies, four points for the French, one point for the French and one point over here for the allies but something's going on over here what the heck this building has fallen to the ah the french have taken this building see they're going for the point victory though it's safe to say they lost the battle you know all right guys so what's going to happen here there's really not much to see these troops are going to go over and take control of these buildings um they should have enough time to do it so, um, I'm just going to fast forward into the end results. I think it's quite clear that the Russian, Spanish, French, or, or I'm sorry, Russian, Spanish, Brit British, and Austrian forces won this battle. It was a great battle. It was a close battle, but let's, let's look at the end results. All right, guys, there you have it. So, uh, I believe this was sent in by Arjins, Arjins. Sorry if I, uh, slaughtered your name there, but, um, look at the amount of kills here. That's the most kills by... A mile here. Wow. 2,000. GG to all the players. This was awesome. Uh, this was fun. And um, I love these battles. They're they're slow paced, but yet full of action. 
So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a comment, share, subscribe, like, you know, do all that, that, all that jazz. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.